So that first picture is looking out our window, looking down at it. The second picture is right after the fire, and and you can see some of the rafters are burned through and, and falling, but since then it's caved in further and they're just dangling in there. So, you know, I just want to reiterate, you know, before a big storm hits us, which I think would lift that whole ceiling out of there and blow it into our house. You know, we've already had two fires damage our house from it, from him and I. I think that, you know, I'd just like to kind of settle this thing down and be done with it. So I'm just passing that on to you. Thank you. Yeah, we have So we have a, a bit of a catch-22 problem. So there is a public nuisance element that we can go after, um, which is the, you know, the old court <coughs> trying to articulate to the judge why this is a public nuisance. Uh, because again, an unstable, unsafe structure can present <coughs> risk to our fire uh, firemen, but you know, uh, neighbors like Mr. Price, there are risks associated with an unsafe structure. We have to prove it, right? so it's our burden. Uh, when I spoke to Mr. Stormont, he said, yeah, you know, we want to get all that cleaned up. Uh, our primary concern in our letter was the open structure element, because an open structure element is something, first of all, it's in our code, which is not allowed to have open structure, and it's something that must be corrected because it's an imminent threat to uh, public safety, particularly children. Uh, plus you can shelter, you know, roads and things like that, and structure like that. Um, the only thing I can suggest is, you know, uh, maybe I can get Mr. Price and we can conduct further investigation. Maybe I can try to get Mr. Stormont to actually meet me at the property so I can create an evidentiary record to support. Um, I absolutely believe every word Mr. Price says. He's never told me anything that wasn't absolutely true. Uh, but again, it's, it'll be the town's burden to prove to the judge that this is a structure that must come down. Um, and so that, that involves engineering questions, it involves experts, but, uh, and, and that'll be the town's cause. So uh, that would be the next steps we can take. Uh, if you'd like me to just spend the next, you know, just before the next meeting, maybe do that investigation with Mr. Price and try to reach out to Mr. Paul and see if they'll meet us at the premises. Um, it depends on how much of a financial commitment you want to make. Definitely try to have a talk with them, maybe the other time. Mr. Price, would you be happy to meet with me over at Mr. Stolman's property? Maybe invite Mr. Stolman to join us? I would, yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I assumed you would. I didn't want to speak for you, though. All right, but the thing is, we're leaving town to mm -hmm. the holiday coming up. Okay. Uh, but if, if Mr. Stolman wanted to do something besides tear that entire roof out of there, then I would like to see an engineer's report saying that whatever he plans to do is, you know, is a solution to keep it from. And that's, that's exactly what I was saying about the evidentiary issue. It would be the town's burden to show um, that it's unsafe, right? You, being, you know, having expertise, you can look at it. Um, but we have to prove it to the judge. You know, before the judge is going to say, you must tear it down. Uh, we don't have a building official, so we're stuck with that too. Okay. Um, but what I'm going to suggest is I'll reach out to Mr. Stormont and see if he's open to, to have that meeting at the property and look at it. I'll reach out to you see what your availability looks like. We'll try to make sure it's something we can offer you at. Because okay? I do understand what you're saying, and, and I have seen the photos, and, and I just we, we have to walk the line in yeah. terms of what we can and can't require. I'm just not going to dig up, Joe. There's some end result here that keeps our house safe. Whatever it's saying. Thank you. Yes, the George Tudor. Did I say that last time? Yeah, sure did. Yeah. I just know yeah. the George. It's two for two days. This is the second person got it right, which normally everybody gets it wrong. George Tudor, 1651123, Waste Springs, Florida. There's been a pattern. There's been a pattern over the last several Monday nights with a group of kids going through town and pushing garbage cans over. Uh, the numbers vary from three to five. It's a group of white kids. You might have seen me today talking to a bunch of right before the meeting. I uh, got two of them going up that they had been doing it. And uh, this morning at 7.09, I get a text from Scott Gay saying that all the, all the cans around his uh, house had been pushed over and a lot of the elderly people too that, that they're doing this to. Um, and they got the one at the fire station across, well, next door here, they knocked down over this morning. And so uh, I brought it to the kids' attention just literally before the meeting. And 
And I know that you may have received some phone calls today uh, from other concerned citizens who had their hands signed with it. But, um, you know, we'll see if, if my conversation with them this evening <clears throat> put, put a stop to it. If not, then I think it's something that we need to uh, get our hands around. Starts with garbage cans and go past them. You have been able to identify them, please? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And then, and, and then uh, people probably have on the ring cameras or these type of cams that people have. And also to Mr. Price's situation as well, uh, it's a pretty bad scene and it is an attractive nuisance. And, and then we have these kids roaming around town. Uh, they can get into the back of the property and it's a, it's a hazard. So uh, you'll see when you get out there. That's all I have. Can I, so, so the, the kids will be able to get into the structure? Yeah, they can get into the back. You, yeah. they, they can Absolutely. Yeah. The yeah. And these kids, I mean, you know how kids are. That's the whole problem with you. You attract the nuisance and fools and things like that. Right. Is they see it and they'll go into it. And then the next thing you know, you guys are just hurt. So. Yeah, and, and that's absolutely so. The, the yeah. reason you prohibit open structure is that attractive nuisance doctrine. Um, the law sort of assumes that children will be children. You know, they're out, they're out, range around, and if you have an open building there, they can go in and explore. It, they will. Yeah. And if Mr. Price's uh, uh, statements regarding the structural integrity of the building are true, you could have a catastrophic accident. Right. Right. Your child in there, and the, the building collapses. Right. So. If, when I spoke to Mr. Storman, he assured me that the steps he would be taking would be to secure the premises. Yeah. And if that's not been done, then he's not met my No, problem. no, and it's, you know, they, we've all been kids. I mean, you, you'll grow up and stuff. So oh, I used to, I, know, yeah. I would look for construction sites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> kids do that. Yeah. But, but that's so, if you're telling me, Mr. Price, is that true? That there's other places you can still enter the structure? Can you, have you observed that? Because of what? Other places where children might be able to enter the structure even after he did the boarding. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's. Because those two buildings are connected in the middle, mm -hmm. and they, they, they could theoretically get in the front, but in the back there's a door that goes into that back part of the so. restaurant. And that little building on the side that was the apartment, you can go right in there because I can see straight yes. through there, right? And right. don't you enter in through that way also? Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's several different entrances. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, so, Mr. Close, you know the times they typically the kids typically go out? Is it that morning or Scott said it was 10, about 10.15 last night. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, and it's and I've seen them out there from 10 o'clock at night till midnight. Monday yeah. nights. Monday nights, yeah. Because last night I got a job on Tuesday, and most people put it out on Monday nights. Yeah, they come early. Thank you, Mr. George. You're welcome. Thank you. Benjamin, register. Big Ben. How you doing? Um, I got my water bill in the mail, and it's one hundred seventy-seven dollars. My water bill wasn't eighty-nine, ninety-one dollars last month. So I'm trying to figure out how it doubled. But I went down today and I talked with Miss I can't remember the man <laughs> and I talked with Miss right here, and she explained it. And she took the thing and we went on it. She took off, I guess. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. She took it off. Well, it took off nine dollars and something. Well, we figured it out. Right. I'm just saying, I want to fix income. I don't know about everybody else, but I can't afford to build that high every month. I want to feed my kid. I tell my kid, if we're going to have water, you're going to eat. There's a lot of other. Elderly people in the neighborhood probably feel the same way I feel. They probably want to fix income. So they're going to have to determine whether they're going to eat or they're going to wash themselves. But then if there's no water in their house, that's they, that's a hazard. Something happens, you know, you got to hydrate, get hot, and my no air, they can pass out. I just think this is a ridiculous price for this town. We're, I understand that, you know, we might need to grow a little bit in certain, certain spots. <coughs> but the people in this town, we're, we're old country fine. That's the way we want it. That's the way we want to catch it. I don't understand. We have to pay a few dollars for that. I understand that. But this is just ridiculous. I cannot afford this. If I can't afford this deal, what am I supposed to do? Not have no water? I mean, I own my own property. I mean, I can put me a well and a septic tank in my property, then I can do away with all the sewage. You can't put water. a well in the timeline. Okay, we see we got room now. Yeah. now but, but let me just ask her a question real quick. What happened? Do you know what caused it to be that high? Or was there a reason? Actually, we actually narrowed it down today. 
In April and May, if anyone could hear bills, their sewer rate was extremely low. Because when IMS put in the new rates, they did not put it in correctly. So April and May was extremely low. So this month for June, the new rates did go in, which is $20.77 for the flat rate, $10.27 for each additional thousand. After the first, after the first thousand, thousand. right. Yeah. So his um, meter reading was 8,800 and something. 8,000. 8,850 gallons. So it made it go up extremely high because of each additional thousand. And, and it was also, the computer. The com also, we found out today that the computer is adjusting where that low rate for April and May, so they're adjusting it. Okay, so then after the new rate, because what was the old rate before the $20 and something? 18 1731 Okay, so. And an uh, additional 1856 Yeah, so the bill will actually probably go down when it's since yeah, regulated out or level out, but it's not, it's going to be a little higher than your regular. What did you say your bill normally is? I, I, I had a water slide. Uh, no, I mean, what is your bill normally? About 80 something to 90. Okay, so it'll probably be maybe 100. Maybe, I don't know. I can't say. I had a water slide yesterday. Let me have a paper bench in my hand. That's the thing. The water slide, you didn't get it for that water slide, so they're trying to compensate you. No, I didn't have to take that off because it wasn't that high, so I didn't care. Right, but they never. Because they never, it wasn't right at that time. You wasn't you, when you had the, the slide, the it rate wasn't in the computer correct. Actually, his rate, actually his correct rate for sewer would be eighty two sixteen for this month. Trash pickup was twenty five something, and the water, mm -hmm. and the water type. So no, his bill would not be a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. yeah. No way. Okay. It would not be enough with the new rates. No, okay. I mean, it, it, yeah. I if I don't say something, I'm not sure, but I've been running my attention about a few people that are possibly might be some places that might not got meters on them, or you can't even see meters. And we actually, so we, not to interrupt you, but we ask you today, if you know of any, let us know. I'm not sure, I'm not going to pull my finger, I'm just going to say that maybe that we need to clean these water boxes out. Make sure they all got meters on them and they all work the problem. Might be something y'all want to All of the addresses that's computer. in the computer do have meters. Yeah, yeah. has all of them. I mean, I, I look at my cousin, they got grass on the top of it. There's a reading, you know. Mine's wrong all the time. Right. We have to dig it out every month. I just don't want it. I had to dig up one to find the turn off. Yeah, mine grows grass and water. It fills up with water. Every month. Every month. Maintenance folks, they physically go by each house to read it and never, ever are they wrong. Every now and then it might be one that he read it. You know, excuse me. But sometimes it can be a leak as well. <clears throat> Check and see if it's a Yeah, I talked to somebody about that too a while back. They told me if you got a leak, you meet you would watch your meters in steady terms and it don't steady turn. I mean, I've done pretty well with over all the bases. I mean, like I said, I went up there and mm -hmm. talked today to see what was going on, and that's just Which like I said, I'm just voicing my opinion for the other people in here that you know right. might be on fixed income or something like that, or you know, just take you know, I mean, I mean, I know we need growth, we need something here, you know. And, we had our poor kids just don't care no more about the community, which we don't get the same treatment as having gas we run for rent department down here. But, you know, I just, someone, I don't, I don't know, I just, I can't afford that. Yeah, okay, so we had a water study, a water and sewer study done by Florida, excuse me, by World, Florida World Water Management. They put us on the schedule on how we have to increase uh, that we have to increase these rates. I understand we're a small town, but when we get water, we still gotta pay for the water just like Jacksonville. So they don't say, okay, you get a discount because you're a small town. So we still have to charge a certain amount. It's, it's unfortunate we're a small population, you got more people spread it out. But the, the thing is, we have a schedule, and we can give you a copy of the schedule of how we're supposed to increase. 
So this time we had an increase of twenty percent because the town has any, don't have any reserves. So and what we got here, they didn't have any reserves. So if anything break down at that plant, you gotta have money to fix those things. So we have to increase the rates. We got a five year plan on how we have to increase the rates. And that was done by Florida World War. So we really can't help nobody. I mean, they all pay water bills. So it's not gonna make it double. I just want to explain why you see an increase in the rate. You can't keep it at 17, we have to go up. So it got double, like you say, because the rates were extremely low. Mm -hmm. and, in the, and in the summertime, you always have, you want to have higher bills. So this, this, the rate going up, was it loaded on or was it come up with by y'all or was it come up by the, the people that did the water testing? The one that did, Florida World Water told us what we needed to do to get on tax financially. That's what they told us we need to go up to, and those are the rates that we're using. So uh, for half people's bad judgments, we're having to pay for it. Right. Yes. Because it should have been raised. Yes. Yes. It should have been, 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 been raised gradually. We wouldn't have had to do it 20%. We could have probably did like 3%, 5%. But because I'm not I'm not trying to point them, but I have to say the past administration, they didn't raise the rates, so we got behind. The town got behind. So now they put us on a schedule. And you say y'all shared that schedule with him today? Yes, okay. they told him about the meeting. Yeah, I can give you a copy of the study. And they told us exactly what we have to raise it. Because okay. even in our program, when we do budget, we have to go. But it's, it's, it's not as much. Like we had to do 20%, which is, it is a big deal. Right, so in other words is, we allow somebody to come in here and tell us what to charge the people in this town that built this town and take out their pockets more than they can give. But that's their specialty business. Like, right. if, we do, if we don't, we're not paying for the, the water. We have to pay a certain amount. We have to pay for water. We have to report water loss. When we, have, when we flush the hydrants, we have to still pay for that water. So we have to account for the water financially. We have to pay for it regardless. So we can't right. charge you $10 and charge the town $20 because the town can't afford it. Right. Well, I mean, I can understand, you know, you go up a little bit, but I mean, you go up to where it doubles, that's, that's just not. It went up 20%. Yeah, yeah that's, just, that's, that's just not right. So for, for my benefit, uh, Ms. Nikki, uh -huh. his bill won't always be $172. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. His, his typical bill if should be. If he stays within the eight thousand, well, the nine thousand, the only difference he's going to see is nine dollars and twenty four. So he's going to go from about eighty nine dollars to about ninety five dollars. No, but my thing is he's not going to burn. Nobody burns eight thousand gallons, so that's like yeah, eight thousand eight hundred and fifty. That's crazy. Like my husband going to wash cars like three, four mm -hmm. times a week. Four and five cars. Right. And, and my water bills are also going on. Yeah, eight thousand gallons. Yeah, eight thousand gallons. Yeah. Six. You got a lot of sewer here, but that's what it is. See, you only got four kids, two adults. But his bill right now is one seventy seven twenty three. One month. The only difference he's going to see out of that one seven seven twenty three would be minus nine dollars and twenty four cents. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Can you explain it? Yeah, you maintain the eight thousand gallons. Ray, Ray kind of may have an explanation. Okay. Then you can use eight thousand gallons a month. This month. This month. What do you normally use? Oh, I don't know, because I didn't have no problem not looking at my shoes. <laughs> 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 that is true. Yes, oh, that is true. I mean, I've been with like the 90-something to 100 yeah. years. No, it's yeah. not the number that's going on. Hold on, because it's... Yeah. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. 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 Hold on. Yeah, they got big buckets. How many gallons? Huh? How many gallons is that? You say one five gallon bucket. A five gallon bucket every four days? And maybe you may have because it's hot, you may have used more water is what he's saying. And you 
Y'all ain't coming in. The, right. the sewer rate was low. But Nobody was came in then to say anything. It's just when the rate went up. The water, some of that water slide <laughs> down yeah. on this bill. Like, yeah. 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 yeah, look at your usage yeah. trends and then see like what you normally use opposed to that month right there at the 8,000. Like the one before and then maybe the next oh, one that comes out. Well, she can look it up. I mean, she can pull it up. Just come in and see how she she can see the last few six months. Let me see you do it. No, we're not worried about this one, Ray. Right? Let's see what we get out of it. How many people stayed down? Six. So that's not what's like this. I take six. that back. Because you know, three of my kids ain't there all the time. So they might be there three or four, might be there one week, might not be there. They might not even be there. 30 days a month, so that's not every year. A year ago, they used the same amount. You used 8,830. So, about this time, every year, you get this, this amount of water. See? Yeah, this say last year. Well, last year, I didn't even get there. They got to go on. Okay, so we can just come in and, and talk with well, Nikki and she can look at his bill to see what he averaged last year. I'm ready. All right, so um, we don't have any presentations. We'll go on to approval of the minutes for the June 13, 2023 town hall meeting. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes? I drop a rule that we approve the minutes for the West Springs Town Council meeting for June 13, 2023. Can I get a second on the motion? Okay, any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No old business, new business, status of the ballpark, council woman and kids first. Okay, um, I received, I received a couple of phone calls about the use of the ballpark. And for the most part, I am in agreement with what they said. They basically said it's for the time. And one know that for me, I'm a child's advocate. I speak up for children. We have to have a place for our kids to be able to go play ball. Most parks do have hours of operation from sunup to sundown. In that same breath, we don't have the manpower for sunup to sundown because we don't have a police force here at the moment. So with that being said, I suggest that we open our baseball field up in the town, the out, towns of the hours. So when Town White Springs open up, we have someone here, we have our maintenance department, they can unlock that field up so our kids could go play baseball, softball, soccer, whatever it is, because I'm one of those parents, so I'm gonna say ants now, that I take my kids down there to do that. With that field locked up, we can't do it. They cannot take the kids down there to have, to be kids, and as he said, that building is open, kids can go into that building, but if we have something for them to do during this time, a place for them to go until maybe we have some community members that are gonna come up with the rec center, rec department, something for our kids to do. But in that time, I suggest that for the town of White Springs open, whenever we that that ball part to get open. From the time whenever time of White Spring closed because after then we don't have anyone to go down there at sundown and we all know that that can be anywhere from eight o'clock right at nine o'clock if you're actually paying yeah. attention to the hours. We don't have anyone in operation during that time. So from sun up to sundown I suggest that the park be open for our citizens and for our kids. You mean from eight to four. Uh, uh, the hours at the time, the, uh, the time, the time that the town of White Springs is open, yeah, eight o'clock, from the time that town of White Springs closed, that is it start to happen, do something, that a place that our kids can go. Every day, just Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday, no weekend. Oh, is it? It's locked because people before I know they were going in the bathroom, destroying the bathroom. Mm -hmm. The mom was talking about the ball. The, the ball, the ball, the ball, the ball, the ball. Yeah. They go through with the four wheelers and it was just tearing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right, right, right. I mean, they, they go there, they just the ball, it's like turn four. 
Let's go in the toilet, out of turn floor. And then they're going to four wheelers tearing up the baseball field. Tearing up the baseball field. And then when you get ready to use it, it's four wheelers. So we can open it. I mean, we can agree to open it. It's no problem. But if the problem starts to happen again, we have to just be tore up. Yeah, to just be tore up. But yeah, that's what that's the thing that go through with the four wheelers and the bikes and everything. But there still will be no power turned on because there's no need for power. Um, and I don't know about the water. How you gonna do that? You turn the water on? Is the water on all the time? They keep breaking the speaking to that. So it's like you can't, I mean, these kids don't appreciate when you try to do something because they're breaking the speaking. Not now because he's fixed. Not now because he's fixed. Well, when they turn it up right there, what? They just don't have anyone. Yeah, they did have a truck out there. We did what we're supposed to do. The church, the church set up a tent down there in Ballville, and they went down there and they took the tent and drove it to demolished it. It was given yeah. to the town the by the parking department. And did you talk about the pedestrian gate so that it's not wide enough for them to get the... Oh, you can go in through that way. I mean, the side gates, you can, yeah, you can open yeah. the gate. Yeah, because yeah, if you just had the pedestrian gate, then they won't yeah. be able to get those through. They could get a bike, a dirt bike or something through there, yeah. so at least they'll stop those for sure. Absolutely, yeah. that's a good idea. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, the department administrative comments. Does anyone in the public have any comments? No more. Any any public comments? Anything? <coughs> oh yeah, I agree with the uh, park kid for the stuff. I I don't make all that. Yeah. Um, and it was going for a few years, and it's like no circle, but it just seemed like no parents wanted to. Pay or bring their kid to play ball around right. because I, if any, I would get my time, I would get a few hours, I would be for these kids, I would go down there, I would train them to play baseball, I would work with them, I would talk with them, whatever they need. Mm -hmm. If you know, put something together, I would get my time for, for the youngest. All right, thank you, Ben. Awesome. Well, and do we have a comment? Ben, I'm gonna take you up on that offer because we just recently started White Springs Athletic League because the town wasn't providing recreation for the kids. Yeah. And we are trying to, the motto is, if the kids can dream it, we're gonna team it. Right. So we're gonna take you up on that offer. Yeah, I love it. I have a little call. Town manager. Okay, um, nothing else going on besides trying to get the audit done. Um, and getting the state everything that they need, that's going pretty well. Working with them, like I said, the audit so we can get the grant that we desperately need because a lot of the infrastructure is crumbling, but we have to get the audit complete before we can um, move forward. Also, uh, Mr. Stubbs reached out to me and he wants to meet with uh, the counselors individually if you're willing to. I've only spoken to two of you all uh, about that, and you express your your um, interest or non-interest in that. Um, so I'm extending this out to each council person to get with me if you are willing to speak with Mrs. Subs individually, so I can get uh, it. Would you let them know what that's about? Yeah. That's about the um, ordinances, the zoning, the changes, changes in the ordinance. Zoning changes for this property right about the library. So y'all will have a workshop August uh, in August, mm -hmm. and remember a couple more folks today. As long as you're not with another town councilor, you can meet with other people. Okay, so you won't be violating the Sunshine Law. It's if two or more councilors get together with somebody, that's a violation. Okay, but you individually can and should 
get yourself informed on issues. The workshop will happen. There'll be lots of questions. You may not know what questions to ask. Generally speaking, you would have a planner or another tech who would be working for the town who would suss out those questions for you. You don't have that. So if, if you want to take Mr. Stutz up on it, even if you get on the phone with him, you know, I would just make sure that you kind of figure out what your questions are going to be before the workshop. Because again, if you if, if you deny a zoning change, it needs to be based on substantial, competent evidence. There has to be a reason. Okay, so you can develop that for this, Mr. Stubbs. And also, I suggest talking with Vanessa to get a little update on what he's going to want to know or okay. what he's proposing. Yeah. Please do your best so to, to know. keep yourself fully informed going into that. Have your eyes wide open. Okay. All right, that's all for now. Yes, that's all. Mr. Steve, fire department. Vanessa, did you get to talk to a Louis? Or get to talk to Louis? Did you get a? Did you get any information from Louis, a contract or something? A contract for the fire? I got an email from Mr. Decker yesterday. Okay. I'm not reviewing yet, but it's, he says it's the same thing that James has said. Well, okay, so this is what this is what we're talking about. I'm not looking at it. All right, so so you know we've been going. For, through this for months now and you know the county would come to us and say here's the contract and then they have all the they would have the stuff mixed up and stuff so they said they came to us and said listen we sit right here y'all make a contract let us know what you could do it for and we'll go with that we had Vanessa myself one of the county commissioners had a meeting in Louis's office in Jasper and uh, it was thrown out just a number like a generic number. It was not a set, this is what we're gonna do. Everything else sounds good. The 20,000 was a set figure. It was just like, hey, let's see. So what we did, I said, well, let us see. So we got back got back here, we'll probably do stuff. That's what we said, 26,000. All right, that information was sent to them. And we wanna do that by June, we wanted to be, the contract be going by June 1st. So we got this done so they could have the meeting. Well, now we're in July, they did have a meeting. I don't know if we were overlooked or we were bypassed, but now Jennings signed the contract for 20, 20,000. Whatever else is in the contract, I don't know. But I spoke to the county commissioner for our area. He met with Louie and said, they're just kind of stuck on 20,000. They want us to be the same. I still say we are not the same. We paid out $41,000 in manpower the monies we get to operate the fire department is from the, the sweet states. Thank God they're there. I know a lot of people don't like it and whatever, but they're there. So that's what's funding us. So we've been the whole year with no funding from, from the county at all. And they're still just saying, we want to give you 20000 I know 6000 is not a lot of money. It's a lot of money to us. To them, it's not. When these firefighters up there are working 40-hour weeks, they're getting paid overtime for anything over 40 hours. So they're making anywhere from 60 to 70,000 a year at these firefighters. So you can't deplete the ones you have and say we can't give you six. So next Tuesday, they have a meeting again. So I'll go to the meeting again. But I just want to know from y'all, 26,000 or nothing. I mean, I don't, I don't know what to do with it. We've had meetings and meetings and meetings. I need y'all to tell me what you want me to do. You speak to your guns and do what you feel is best. It's your department. It's your department. I mean, you know what you the other part, And the other part is any, any of the citizens who live in the county, they might want to start pulling some strings because uh, they'll be the most affected. Mm -hmm. Because if there's, you know, you don't want to say we'll run city limits, but we are White Springs, and it's our char charter. We have to provide a fire department for White Springs. That's what we're doing. They don't say we gotta do it for anything else. Right. So, you know, that's my my opinion this time. Um, I'll go to the meeting and see what they say. Other than that, you know, we still occur expenses. Uh, the engine had a power steering leak, so it's at the, it had to be uh, towed to the shop because the power steering you burn up the power steering to drive it. So that and the little mirror is fixed and it's just gotta be picked up. The guys over there are still having a great time. Uh, we have missed a few calls, but uh, the majority of our calls are em EMS calls. Uh, there's a power pole. One guy run three calls in one day and he about wore out, you know, but 
but they're still coming back. They still like it up here. They like the town. And uh, there's five of there's five of them and myself. So we have six people. Now, they all don't work at the same time. <laughs> but uh, kind of watching the budget as far as that goes. But uh, six thousand uh, six thousand dollars for the county, they should not be fussing over that. Steve, let me ask you this. What about the light pickup truck? Is it in the shop? Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's there. It's, it's fixed? Yeah, it's, it's over oh, okay. there. We just didn't fix the fender. It's not a, that's just a cosmetic yeah, thing. Yeah. Everything else is fixed. The seat does Yep, that's all, all, that's all been taken care of. Okay. I just had to So we're waiting for the new budget to see how much it's going to cost to fix the fender and move on with that. But other than that, it's good right now. Yeah. Is that all? So what are y'all? I'm just asking, what would you like me to do on the, the night? Because I don't want to go, well, I can't speak to the council. I want to be able to speak for them and say, this is what it is. What you say? Okay. Utilities, okay. right? Nothing? All right. Council? Yes, we will the ballpark um, begins with the pedestrian group. Ray, make sure the pedestrian grade is open for the ballpark tomorrow, please. Yeah, well. Thank you. Eight Monday through Friday, because the plant office works Monday through Friday. The yeah, motion says whatever the town hall, whatever the town does. She was just verifying because they are out on Friday. Ray and them aren't working. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow. Is that it? No other? Yeah. Um, we had a loss in my family, and I want to and, and I want to thank y'all who uh, who did reach out. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Y'all got to stop leaving the um, attorney off. Oh, oh, no, it's okay. I'll jump in there. Oh, true. Sure. <laughs> 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 I mean, yeah. The reason why is he talked to everybody because we always gather with yeah. him. So when you said, Man, yeah, sometimes Joel helped me out here and Ray, you know, he yeah. has to go through everything. You know, All right. I'll, I'll talk over here. All right, so is that it? No other council has anything to say? Meeting adjourned, 7 13 p.m.